Hey folks, welcome back to the series on paper reviews. It's been a while. Uh, I thought I might as well make one video before the year is over on on this. Um, so we got two papers from Meta and um, they're quite interesting. So the first one is by Clayton Transformer, which is instead of using tokens, why don't we use patches? And the other one is um, reasoning in latent space. So let's talk about the first one. So this one is not, um, I don't see a lot of science here. It feels like engineering and a lot of engineering seems like they just tried a bunch of things till something worked and that's what they've written about. But still, let's let's dive into like what's going on in this paper. And again, this is just a quick summary for detail. Just watch the or rather read the paper. Um, right. So tokenization is the is the key problem right now uh, among among the large language models because um, you might have seen like sometimes language models are unable to uh, spell things backwards because you know how tokens are constructed and so on and tokenization loses meaning of numbers and um, there are a lot of like problems associated to tokens and um, right now they're not trained so you tokenize you create a fixed vocabulary uh, you just create tokens and then you do an end-to-end -end training on your transformer you never train the tokenizer end-to-end -end. you just just quickly train a tokenizer on a, on a bunch of data using byte pair encoding whatnot uh, so in this paper, um, patches are kind of trained. So um, another flaw with tokenization is that each token gets equal amount of compute. So a lot of irrelevant tokens like A, the will get irrelevant uh, will get the same amount of compute, which is probably not the right thing. You you want to focus your compute on only the relevant tokens and that this is where this method shines so let's uh, let me quickly give you an overview so the idea is that um, you start with a byte level information so here um, so byte is ba basically we'll have all the two the ASCII characters all up to 256 so you break break it down um, so here better than BPE becomes B E T T E R and so on space so this this so you have individual bytes and uh, basically you will encode them into patches how, how the patches are found we'll talk about it in a bit but you get these patches and then um, some are more important some are least important and that's where so the transformer works on the patches and then again you you then decode things in in the byte space so again since i said encode and decode other than the transformer, the big transformer, there are encoders and decoders. So there are, again, transformer layers before and after the actual transformer. So uh, I'm not like convinced that this is like, this is a nice step, but uh, I think we have a way to go to be token free. Uh, I don't think tokenizers are dead just yet. So, okay. So let's say you have a string here Daenerys Targaryen is in Game of Thrones a fantasy epic by George R.R. R. Martin so a way to break the text would be hey let's break it up whenever there are spaces that's one way to do it another way is like hey I'll just take four tokens together no matter how it is that's another way to do it um, your BPE tokenizer has you know via its algorithm it breaks things down um, it, it does a lot of combinations, but this is what you get. Or you can do um, entropy based. So in entropy based, what we will do is we will have a small lightweight language model and we'll try to do um, at a character level, we will try to find the entropy of each, each byte. So here we, we find the entropy of D is the highest is, is rather is very high A is very high e is very high so every time the entropy is high they become individual patches and then this whole thing has a low entropy so this becomes a single patch that's how so again there is another model here but what can you do so so that's why this is the entropy thing dae was a separate patch everything else single patch 
um, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, you can also add monot monotonic behavior here uh, as well, but which will change the patch dynamics. But from your input sequence, this is how you kind of get the patches. Okay, so now let's now the, um, if you have patches, uh, what these um, right? So one thing. Um, so before we even like apply the transformer we need to convert the patch and the, um, the byte representation into some kind of an embedding. So the way you generate an embedding is, uh, let me see. So yeah, so basically you have a 256 times um, whatever is your hidden dimension kind of matrix where you just assign an embedding, just like your standard embedding layer to every byte you assign uh, an embedding vector. Okay, and another engineering trick. So, so right now the bytes have no notion of their neighbors or the locality. So you encode the locality by basically, you will basically generate a hash, an n-gram hash. So you, you generate three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight gram hash of the neighbors, and then you add it to that vector. So basically, what you would kind of do is um, you will compute an n-gram, I guess maybe take an average of all the items in the n-gram, create a hash, and whatever vector you get, you add that to the original vector. And then you do it for 3-gram, 4-gram, so on. Um, just to induce some kind of locality or locality awareness. Um, I mean, I think something else would have also worked, but I guess this is fast. Um, then, okay, so, so let's, let's look at this diagram. So then how you, um, so you have your bytes. These are your hidden states, uh, your, your byte hidden states after this encoding and n-gram addition. And then you have your patch representation. So suppose my, all, all of this data can be, uh, can be broken down into three patches. So I have these three patches, um, and, um, you get the patch representation patches are basically you will just aggregate or pool together the byte so if if first two made a patch you just pull them together and you get a patch representation so what you will have is uh you have basically a cross attention where the queries come from here and the keys and values come from the byte states so um and then whatever you get basically you'll again get some three patch representations out whereas your byte encoders um will, will basically be output here and so so you have a cross you have a cross attention first which modifies this uh your patch representation but not the byte representation then you have just self attention within the byte byte layers and that, that generates some byte embeddings um, so just just like induces locality awareness through attention and whatnot. Um, now um, the global representation that we have that came out of, of after the cross attention layer is where we apply the bulk transformer. This the the standard language modeling transformer. Uh, this this so let's go back to this. So we started with the we started from the byte representation. And uh, with our encoder, we generated uh, with whatever patching and so on, we generated the patches, and then we generated the patch representation using our uh, this, this attention formalism. And then we have our giant transformer, the bulk of the base will be here. So which, which acts in this patch space. So after the patch space, after we do our computation in the patch space, um, we basically get the output so for example um, we will use the encoder so uh, the bytes we will use the bytes and the outputs of the large uh, large transformer and then the bytes will be used as queries and then the the patches as keys and values and then just attention on the bytes so then you finally get bytes as output so so the input is in bytes and the output is in bytes. And that's why this is, um, so the patches are generated kind of using entropy. So 
um, it is the the model will pay attention to uh, things where entropy is like things with low entropy are grouped together so so less less compute is spent over them things with high entropy is uh, are used for um, computers focused there so that's that's the general idea and it turns out they run a, actually they do a lot of training on this on an 8 billion parameter model and they get good results good scaling trends um, so it does pretty decent um, okay so th they compare 1 trillion tokens with 6 trillion so I'm not sure uh, what do I make of this but um, so but yeah so 1 trillion 1 trillion it seems to outperform well by a tiny amount uh, llama 3 and um, it actually does well in the character level thing substituting words substituting character and, and so on but again not, not by a lot for some tests but yeah that's the paper interesting stuff like i think um um i this how do you how do we get away from tokenizers is the next frontier okay switching gears so the next paper is the uh, this interesting one um about training large language models to reason in continuous latent space so right now when we so what is the key paradigm of um, reasoning? You, you ask the model, hey, can you do a chain of thought? Hey, can you think about it or reason step by step? So this chain of thought is the reasoning process where the model will start breaking problem down into steps. And also, uh, so, but, but then when it's breaking these, uh, breaking the problem down into steps or when it is thinking, the thoughts are tokens in the vocabulary space. So what the authors say here is are is the vocabulary is thinking in vocabulary space losing information? Can we just do it in latent space, like in the embedding vector space? And that's what they pretty much do. So let me show you this diagram. Um, so let's say if you had a question and um, then the model started um, doing the chain of thought, we would generate a token then the next token and auto regressively and we'll get the answer. This is your standard chain of thought. However, here um, in the chain of continuous thought, like they say continuous because it's in the embedding space rather than the vocabulary space. Um, when we have the question, they introduce this begin, beginning of thought kind of token. And after that, uh, whatever hidden representation is created, we never get a vocabulary item out. We use this, hidden representation as an input embedding for the next tokens decoding and so on and then finally we when the thinking is done we will induce an end of thought token after that it will start generating in token space so between so basically the model will work in word space in in human vocabulary space and also in the late in this latent space um, so where you introduce these tokens is a bit manual so let me show you like how they train so okay they will so first they get a chain of thought training data so that so there's a question and the model thinks about it step one step two step three step and and gets the answer then what they do is they will put a beginning of thought and end of thought token and train on all the steps then uh, they will have begin of thought and then they will leave um, you they will give space for a thought and then do the training on this so so this is the whatever is the output of uh, bot gets input here and um, the training is on so note note one step is traded for a thought token um, then another step is traded in for a thought token and so on till you just have the answer at the end. So at this point, you're not doing any compression. You're just trading in latent um, vocabulary tokens for thought tokens. Uh, and the idea that they claim is um, this allows you to do a lot of breadth first search and get good results. Um, and during decoding, they will artificially introduce the begin of thought and change and end of thought like one token two token three token four token five token away let the model do it like for n number of times and then see what the result is um yeah so let's see right 
um, the, the details are here, which I won't go into, but, um, but yeah, so, so basically, um, this, um, you can see that there is a large gain, um, well, not really. So, so this is 42.7, 42.9. I don't know what happened here, but for the others, it seems like there's a lot of improvement. Um, okay. So there's a lot of like ideas here, like why this works and why, and, and this is intuitive, this should work, right? Because you have like way more degrees of freedom at the representation layer uh, level than the, uh, than at the vocabulary level. So, so this is, this is good stuff. Um, yeah. So, you know, feel free to give it a read. It seems like an interesting direction. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep my description brief and I'll, I'll end here, but, but pretty, pretty interesting to, uh, pretty interesting two papers. All right. Um, I guess I'm, I will end this here and I will see you next year. Please like and subscribe. Peace.